Norio Kabenli and all the former residents of Rangalab live hundreds of miles away from here. They left more than 20 years ago, scattering throughout the Marshall Islands in the Pacific. Today, Norio and the others dream of coming back home to this island, not just for a one-day visit, but for good. <laughs> Millions have been spent to get rid of the deadly radiation on Rangalap, but no one lives here anymore. The newly built homes and the village church are empty. Norio and the others are still not sure if it's safe to live in Rangalap. If the nuclear cloud is finally lifted from what happened here 50 years ago. On March 1, 1954, young Norio and the people of Rangalap awoke to the blinding flash of the hydrogen bomb called Bravo. It was the most devastating explosion ever set off by the U.S. government, a thousand times more powerful than Hiroshima. Yeah, behind the outstanding, I was standing, looking to the west. I saw a blast. After 15 to 20 minutes, I saw a big cloud coming up from the west. And the color was yellow, red, and orange. After one hour, we all hear the sound coming from the west all the way to east. And that was a big sound, sound like a thunderstorm. Hours after the Bravo blast, a deadly cloud of radioactive debris fell from the sky. It was carried by winds across the Pacific, more than 100 miles from where Bravo exploded on Bikini Island. Tiny flakes that looked like snow suddenly covered this tropical island, burning the faces, skin, and hair of every Rangalap person in its wake. Soon, the entire population was evacuated to a U.S. military base, where their wounds were treated safely out of harm's way. One of the most badly scarred was Norio's 11-year-old brother, Hiroshi, who suffered radiation burns across his body. A military doctor named Robert Kennard tended that day to Hiroshi's injuries. Dr. Kennard would soon go to Brookhaven National Lab, where he'd head a team examining the health of those exposed to Bravo's radioactive fallout. Their research began as a secret military program and later moved to Brookhaven under contract to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. It would stay there for the next 43 years, all part of America's attempt to understand radiation's impact on humans in the event of nuclear war. In moving people off Rangalap, doctors warned they should not be exposed to any more radiation for at least 12 years, if not the rest of their lives. But after only three years, the people returned home in 1957, assured by Brookhaven doctors that Rangalap was safe. In confidential memos, Brookhaven conceded the island was still more contaminated than any place on Earth. But the 250 people who returned wouldn't learn that fact until many years later. As part of an ongoing research study, Brookhaven viewed their homecoming as an opportunity to study radiation in the human body. A confidential memo spelled out their intent. The habitation of these people on the island will afford most valuable ecological radiation data on human beings. Exposing Rangalap's people to more radioactivity without their knowledge was a gamble the Americans were willing to take. Brookhaven's team traced the fallout as it made its way through the food chain and into the returning people, increasing the radioactivity in their bodies. Dr. Neil Palafox says the Rangala people wanted to go home, but that Brookhaven should not have allowed them to do so until it was safe. This was a gamble. It was a gamble of uh, feeling that, well, maybe the amounts they would get wouldn't be so significant. There was significant risk there. They were in an environment and from an environment where you're concentrating in your body for many, many years, you're at risk. If this was my mother or father, would I move them back? I would say if you put that into the equation, none of the people would have been moved back. For the next 30 years, people were allowed to live on contaminated Rangalap despite a growing number of health problems that included increased cancer, thyroid tumors, birth defects, and growth retardation. You know, when these people were returned and resettled and lived until 1985, uh, the health of the people did not improve. In fact, you know, many uh, radiogenic related conditions uh, continue to exist uh, within the population. Patricia Worthington oversees health and safety for the U.S. Department of Energy, which owns Brookhaven National Lab. 
She says Brookhaven's mission was always about providing health care to the Marshallese affected by bomb radiation and not studying humans for research purposes. At the time that Brookhaven delivered the services for us, they were world class. They were uh, uh, recognized for their uh, expertise in the area of understanding of radiation, the health effects from radiation. They were liked by the Marshallese uh, and they were well respected. When asked about the memo that put people back on Rongelap 50 years ago, Worthington stressed the U.S. government did not consider it a human experiment. I'm not aware of anything that I could label that uh, either Brookhaven or DOE did that was wrong, but I, I believe that we are always forward-looking and forward-thinking about uh, how we can better um, you know, deliver the services to the people that we've been charged to serve and that we're privileged to serve. In April 2007, the Nuclear Claims Tribunal, a panel set up by the American and Marshallese governments, granted a billion-dollar judgment to Rongelap's people for damages caused by the fallout. The tribunal concluded people were put back on Rongelap for scientific research and military defense concerns, and that Brookhaven officials knew their island was still contaminated. One of the most insidious aspects of radiation is that you can't see it, you can't taste it. You can't touch it. It's there, it affects you in ways that aren't immediately apparent. And that was the environment, you know. <laughs> the levels of activity are higher than those found in other inhabited locations in the world. And we're putting you into that environment, into that location, so that we can see how the radioactivity moves from the soil, through the food, and into your bodies. Of course, they weren't being told that. But eventually they began to get a clue because the doctors kept coming every year. For Norio's family, the long-term impact of radiation was devastating. He takes special medication for a thyroid damaged by radiation and still has burns on his feet. His mother, his sister, and his wife all had their thyroids removed because of cancer concerns. Norio and many others believe the illnesses they have resulted from being put back on a contaminated island many years ago. Today, Norio Kabenli and the people of Rangalap still live in exile, unsure if they will ever go home. Questions about their cancers and thyroid disease remain unanswered. The battle over billions of dollars in compensation to be paid by American taxpayers is still going on. Fifty years after the Rangalap people were put back on their contaminated homeland, the fallout now continues for all those in its wake.